and we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Toe the Line with me, George Glinsky, joined today by Chris Trisize. How are we doing, my man? I'm fucking banging, my mate. I'm all good over here, my brother. Just looking forward to getting that ring again. It's been, been far, far too long since the last uh, encounter in the BKB ring. So I'm just looking forward to getting in there and uh, going toe to toe, my man, as we do. Yeah, no, it's been a really long time. BKB 18, the last time we saw you against Robbie Drought. I wonder, yeah. what have you been up to? Obviously, it's been, what, two and a half years since we've last seen you in BKB? Um, yeah, about two and a half years. So, OK, I had my daughter, Nyla Wright, um, not long after the Robbie Drought fight. So I kind of took a little bit of a back step from the fighting game, uh, gloves and the bare knuckle, because obviously I wanted to be there for the baby. And then we hit lockdown, then we so... With the lockdown type of thing, I hit two camps back to back, my man. So I was looking to fight Paul, uh, Paul Hill, mm. lovely gentleman of a, of, of a guy. He is. Um, but I was really looking forward to that fight. We really trained hard for it. And then we hit the first lockdown and then that BKB got cancelled. So then they pushed it forward again. So what I did, I kind of stayed in camp straight away and then went straight through to the next camp. So that was pretty much like 24 weeks of training. That was where I kind of, I was in a very, very, very slender type of shape. So I lost a little bit of weight, but I was very defined. Um, and then we lost down again. And then from that, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give myself my body a little break. So I weren't going to do three back-to-back camps. You know what I mean? That would have been way too much. It was just way too much, especially with, with work, because okay, you've got people out here that um, are able and fortunate enough to, had the time to literally not go to work, but also just to, you know, just to train full heart and just train. And unfortunately, me being a man in the world and a working class type of guy out here, um, I, I, I always work. I work like between 50 and 60 hours a week and get my training. And if I don't get down to the gym, I can, I'll give you a little route around my back garden. I've got the white bench in my garden. I've got, the, I've got my, my bag up on my tree. You know what I mean, so I'm never about getting any fight. I'm always fighting to always fighting to I, I could take a fight at the last second and know that I could do seven rounds like that. What was what was that like? Obviously, two and a half years out of the ring, it's a long time. You are a fairly active fighter. You've had you've taken breaks before, but definitely not to this considerable length. What was what was it like being in lockdown? You know, obviously fight career was all up in the air, everything was all up in the air. You weren't sure when you were getting back yeah. in the ring. What was that like mentally as a fighter, preparing for fights that just didn't seem like they were ever going to happen? Well, to be fair, for the amount of years that I've, that I've done this for, you kind of set yourself up for certain, or, or certain obstacles that get involved, or you trying to fight her. So you always make sure that you, you're trying to adapt to a fight, any fighter. And I mean, but also it is good to have it in the, in the pocket that if you know you're fighting a guy, you're trying to fight that guy like any professional fighter, but you always keep it in the locker that, you know, you can go to war, you can box, you can adapt styles, fight short guys, fight long guys, fight attacking guys, fight teasers on the back foot. So in the back of my head, it was all, I kept active with the weight and obviously with my training, but also I, I was doing a lot of training with my family as well, like my daughters. So my daughters, they, they like to box as well. So I was keeping on top of them with their boxing with the pads things like that keeping that keeping in the sense where i was doing lots of shadow loads of bad work i mean it was unfortunate that we couldn't we couldn't get lots of sparring around the game because more more i'd say a good 70 percent of my camp mm. is to do with in-ring sparring yeah. and i mean because for certain you do you make making mistakes in sparring so you don't make them mistakes in the ring because as you know yourself i've been to some fucking wars in that ring you know what I mean, very, very much so the wars, like I say. And I think a lot of that was a lot of pride in me, where it was, I could stand toe to toe with anybody in that ring. And, I, I, and I've showed it in fucking on many occasions. Far the one count and Mr. Sweeney splitting the head open, but four fights in for that fight. And like I say, honoured to share the ring with him, another, another great friend of mine from the DKB, very much a gentleman himself. Four fights in, striking at the deep end, world total shot form. There you go. But like I said, I think now as a fighter with the lockdown, it made me go inside myself a little bit more well thinking there's lots of other possibilities in that ring to be able to structure the fight the way that you want it to be structured mm. and then adapt if your opponent don't adapt to you. So I think 
it kind of helped me lockdown, dude. I found myself a little bit more as a man, as a fighter, as a father, um, as a, you know, as a as a mentor to certain people, making sure that my people are okay. And I mean, picking up the phone, is everything all right? Do you need anything? Do you, you know, how are you and your mental state of Because us as men out here um, in the fight day, uh, they don't understand about the added pressures, the sales, making sure you fight fit um, in case of any dropout. Uh, so as a fighter out here, a working class fighter, um, a working class professional fighter, it's, uh, it can be very draining and you can have your ups and your downs. So without the, the, the boxing sort of things uh, or the gym sort of things as a man, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of most men out here that, they don't feel the same way. Uh, the, oh, hello, Nola. You can't say hello. Uh, no, you can't have that. Can't have that, but so yeah, men out here, we um, you have to kind of adapt. But it, it made me, made me get get inside myself where I knew what I had to do and I knew where I had to put my mind. So I think the second lockdown was a bit harder. Mm. The first one wasn't so bad, but the second one that got on top of me. He got that began because obviously. I was still working straight through. So when everyone's having all this time off, I was straight through working. Like that. 10 hours actually at work, and then an hour in the morning, an hour in the night time traveling. That's all 12 hours a day, coming back home, being a full-time father, because obviously I'm a single, well, single guy wearing his old, well, I was a single guy, I'm not man. <laughs> I was a single guy having the babies. Uh, I have my eldest one living with me, the little one I have 50-50 uh, custody with her. Uh, the other one, so there was never a time in the household where I never had one of my children here. And to have, look after them, make sure you provide for them, look after them, and then have time for the gym and for yourself. It, it's a hard struggle sometimes. And I don't think a lot of fans out there and promoters and trainers, they don't kind of understand that. I think they see it a one vision. Yeah. So I think it's best to be open-minded with all of that. And also a big shout out to all the men who are out there that do support with mental health that you know that have got through and have sorted themselves out and getting that help because it's always good to get that help. I mean, even if it's a phone call or a chat. But more my side is the gym wait um and making sure that I'm active. Because if I'm not active, I feel like I'm up here when I'm active and when I'm not active, my corn levels come down. So you have to find that happy medium balance where you're not overworked, overrun. And you're up here, but you're not underworked and fucking run down. So you don't need to have to find that central central balance. I think. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of hard work and sacrifice. Guys like yourself who are working full time jobs, massive overtime, and then having to come back and getting those late nights and those early mornings to sacrifice and really get those fight camps in. So, for guys especially like you, it's been really difficult. And I just have to commend you first and foremost for your your dedication to the sport. Um, and yeah, it's just really inspirational to hear. But your new opponent, Gavin Kura, this is the, the return fight, the 11th of September, only two and a half weeks away, I yeah. believe. You fought yeah. the best of the best. You fought the Jimmy Sweeney's. You fought the very top echelon of bare knuckle competition. What threats does Gavin Kura face to you? Like any fighter, the old fight looks so sad. You never, one never did but book boys cover and also never listened to what people are saying about the fights going out there. All you can do is mentally prepare yourself for what's going to go on ahead with the fight. Also, prepare yourself for any adaptations in the ring. Mm. And also, but you know me as well, George. Well, I've fought before in that ring where I've lost my head in the ring and I've stood toe-to-toe and I've looked at my fight with Robbie Gray. And that was a prize thing that was. I thought, well, fuck you. You bollocks. You ain't putting me down and you ain't going to stop me. But... I think as you get a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I think it's time to uh, box clever, box smarter. You know, box smarter, hit harder. And it's not about how many hits you can take before you get fucking put down. It's about how many hits you can fucking move away from and give back before you take that punishment. Because um, the bare knuckle game is a very grueling game, as you know. As where there's gloves, you will take jabs to get on the inside. Mm. So if, if Gavin prepared to take jabs off me to get on the inside, come, come and take the jabs. I mean, because obviously, being a smaller fighter, his game plan's going to try and come on the inside of me. I've got that in the locker. I mean, I'm trying for that. If he wants to come full-on face-to-face with me and stand toe-to-touch, 
I've got that in the locker as well. You know what I mean? So I'm ready to adapt. I'm ready to put the pressure on. I'm ready to I'm ready to showcase some different type of boxing skills and talents in this in this fold and use my head and not listen. Because I think nine times out of ten with some fighters with a big pride and big heart, they kind of listen to the crowd. Go on, get in there, knock him out. Listen, mm. you're not the one in the fucking ring. Mm. Yeah, you're not the one taking the punishment. Yeah, to your face, to your body, to your hands. You know what I mean? It's not gloves. It's bare knuckle. So I think it's about boxing smart, boxing clever. Oi, Jimmy Sweeney, best in the game. Best in the game. Straight out there. I'll put it out there. He, he works. He works that jab. And he, well, he, work, he works the snap of the jab. Lines himself up. And he's in and he's out. It's very rare you see Jimmy stand toe-to-toe. Me and Jimmy had a toe-to-toe in the second round. And I'll tell you what. It fucking went off. It could have went either way there. Yeah. And I mean, even said he said to me, "Fuck me, so he was like, you fucking you hit me with some power there." He said, "I was in and out to get out." So, like any fight there, my man. If anyone gets clicked in the right place in the right time, it's anybody's game. And I'm not one for, not one for excuses, George. So it's one of those ones. If I get in there and I do my job correct, I'll be coming out with a win. I mean, and that's what I intend to do. Also, you get these fighters out there that they, they get clipped, they get hurt, and they're like, oh, well, this happened. Well, listen, mate, no, you got fucking clipped, you got knocked out, you got put out, and that's the name of the game. There's no excuses holding for it. And I'm a big man out here, and if you're a big man out there as well, and you take a clip and you take a loss, you hold your hands up and you say, listen, I took the fucking shot, you put me out, there's my hands to the fucking ceiling. Or I lost the fight, and you know what? We fucking we go again. Let's have a point, and we go again. Definitely, definitely. Is that what we can expect from you? Obviously, when a fighter has been out of the ring for so long, there will be evolutions, there will be changes. Are we expecting to see a more composed Chris Tresize come fight night? Uh, you know, the boxer, the boxer that we've seen in the past in portions. Yeah. Ultimately, that is who we're going to. That's right. In portions, in portions, because I'll go from, as you know as well, and it's seen is that. I'll go from look, the start of the Sweeney fight again. I had to be on top of my game. And then he caught me with that fucking jab, snap, left hook so many times. I thought, fuck you, let's have it. And look, you have to be composed. And it's a, it is about keeping the composure. And that's why I'm going to put myself out there for you this time. I don't want to be coming away with my face looking like fucking slap out the game. <laughs> and I mean, I want to be walking away pretty much unscathed. Okay, you're going to take shots regardless. But it's about boxing smart, okay, but composure. Yeah. Um, I know I can stand toe to toe and I know I can, you know, go with the best of the best. But it's not about that. You have to consider all the other factors as well. I e working class man again. I don't want to keep saying it, you know, say six hours a week. I have to use these to work to provide for my family. Um, and then after the Robbie Drake fight, I don't even know about this, but I went and packed no, the SASU Dares wings. I passed all the tests and everything for that. Mm. So I was done on SASU Dares wings. And then when I went to uh, to London, to be picked up and everything. And I turned up with my face looking like he did. And uh, the film crew said, listen, we, we, can't have, we can't have you on the telly looking like that. And I was like, what do you mean? They were like, you can't. So that, I had to take a back straight away from that. And then I went to do the SASU Dares again. Um, and then lockdown shut down again, so I couldn't go and do the test and stuff. So who knows? That might be a factor in in a little bit of time where things start coming together correctly. But definitely composure, George, mm. without a doubt. But I'm lucky enough that I've got that switch where I can be composed and I can be violent, nastily violent towards my opponent. Mm. But it's a switch there, nevertheless, where um, I think pride and pain, pride and pain can take you to a different spectrum in the fight game. So you can have a game plan massively and then as soon as you get hit and you're hurt, and you know when you see these fighters, I'll give you an example, you see these fighters, bam, 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 get hit. They smile at you. Mate, you're fucking hurt, bro. Yeah. Listen, you're smiling because you want everyone else to think, oh, you're all right, no, listen, let's cut the fucking bullshit. Well, let's not sugarcoat it because we ain't fucking Willy Wonka. Well, you hurt. So, with me, if I get hit and I get hurt, then I'm fucking coming straight for you. I don't take a step back, you know that, George. I mean, if I'm coming for you, I'm coming straight directly to you. 
know what I mean? I'm not taking a step back and I will put that pressure upon you until I break you down differently. But if I'm getting caught with shots, then that's not a clever move to make, is it? No, definitely, definitely not. So, you know, looking at the card itself, you've got the opponent you were supposed to be facing, Paul Hills on the card. He's fighting, I'm going to say yeah. this, fighting for your title, a title that you never technically lost, yeah. a, fight, a title that was never was lost. Yeah. From, you know, due to inactivity. He's he's fighting for this vacant belt. Now, Barry Jones originally had it. Now it's a vacant belt between him yeah. and Nathan DeCastro. Got to have your eyes on that. You've got to have your eyes on regaining. I'm taking it back. Listen, let's, just get, let's get something fucking straight. <laughs> now, I'm taking this title and I'm taking that title because I've lost one fight in this time. I think I've had 29 rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Yeah, I've done the fight. Uh, after, my, after, my, after my first ever bare knuckle boxing match with, with Christian Evans, I've done five rounds. Every, every fight after that, or I've done five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, right? And I've got some people out there earlier, but nevertheless, I've gone to fucking war with the best of the best. Like you say, fucking, you, you smudge your sniffs, you, you fucking, you Christian Evans, you know, you Robbie Drake, and I mean, you Jimmy Sweeney, you know and I mean, I've been, and you've mad at, let's not forget Maddox, we oh. love that geezer, he's a fucking legend, love our Stuart Maddox, he's a fucking legend in the game. I'd love to see him come back. I'd love to see him come fantastic. back because he's got a lot to give here. A lot, lot to give. Um, like I said, another five rounders, all of them five rounders. Um, so, I'll be coming for that toll. I'll be taking that toll. I will be taking it. And whoever's got it, and I'm, I will hold my hands up to them, fair play. You, you can hold on to that. Look, no, look, I'm going to hold on to my car key because I'm coming back for my car and I'm going to take that back home with me. There you go, yeah. That kind of pissed me off a little bit. But in activity, like I say, I, I weren't prepared to fight in the lockdown shows for the simple reason. I wasn't bit, I wouldn't have been able to get my training correctly for the fight. So therefore I wouldn't have been hundred percent crisp in the room. And there's no way I was gonna go in there anything less than hundred percent. Paul Hills, he, he come unstuck with Barry Jones, because Barry Jones is a fantastic fighter. He's he, he's world class, world class. Uh, and I think Paul didn't think he was going to come out in like that. I thought Paul, I think Paul thought he was going to play uh, the scrappy game. Mm. And Barry Jones isn't about that. He's got too much calibre of technique for that type of game plan. And plus, he's a southpaw. Southpaws are awkward as fuck, anyway. Um, now, Barry Jones is going for, he's going for world total shot. I know Barry Jones has. He is, yeah. That's, that's at 73 kilograms, though. He's dropped down a few weights. Yeah, he has, he has dropped down a few weights. But yeah, but look, I always wanted to. I, I, I want listen. Whoever it is, regardless, after this fight, we'll see what goes on with this fight first. But I've I've had to push up a couple of weights. I've gone up to thirteen and a half to fourteen stone, where I was twelve seven before walking around weights. So, look, say if I could show you what's in my fridge at the moment, George, with eat more eating more. I'm up. I'm up on weight in a minute. I'm at the lower end of the weight at the moment. Mm-hmm. So don't get, don't let the baggy tops don't get it fucking twisted. I've got the fucking weight on me. I'm fucking I'm there. So I've just got this week and next week now to just carry on stockpiling. But I've 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 had the camp nicely doing um the rounds after rounds after rounds. So that's in the that's in the that's in the locker. That's there. The strength and conditioning, Simon is no look so you look at it, you, you look at it like this way as well from the uh, fitness factory camp. Look how many champions you've got coming out of that fucking gym, man. Come on. We've got, we've got a good caliber for there. And look, say, Solomon, quality, quality gentleman. He put his all in it for all of us for us. But going back to that, whoever the winner is, right? I wouldn't mind fighting them after. After I take this toll, because I'm, I'm going, I'm, I don't go any other way but straight forward for the win. And I don't look at it like I'm going to lose. I don't look because you can't. I see myself holding that belt. I see myself holding that belt and having that knockdown, taking him down, looking over him, making sure he's down. But also one thing I don't do as well, dude, I don't be coffee. I don't do the trash talk bullshit. I don't say I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to do this. Because the day that you start saying all that bullshit is the day that you get sparked the fuck out yourself. And, and also as well, it's a gentlemanly sport. As much as it's ruthless and brutal, it's fucking a gentleman's sport, like I say. I've had made some fucking friends for life that I've been fucking toe-to-toe with in that room. And we're still keeping contact. I, me and Jimmy Sweeney, very close, mate. Me and Maddox, very, very close, mate. Same as me and Smudger. 
really close minds to them. Like I say, you can't go to war with someone and share a bloody event and have that mutual respect without gaining some kind of bond with that with your opponent. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So predictions wise, I don't know how specific you want to be on this one, but what are we see when we come to fight night against Gavin Kura. Wow, oh, no, I'm looking I'm um, to be fair, I'm not look sorry, I've got a game plan. And the game plan is not rushing around. If he wants to come and rush and try and put it on me, I can adapt to that as well. <laughs> so look at that. I can adapt. If you want to try and rush me, bring it to me. Because if you bring it to me, let me tell you something. You're bringing it to the right guard because I'm going to bring it fucking straight back to you. Straight back to you. And I'm going to bring it back to you tenfold. Because I've got it in the locker. My fitness is there. It's through the roof. You know what I mean? I can do four-minute rounds. Four-minute rounds at a fast pace. So if you want to push on to me for two minutes, I'll have that all day long for five rounds. Bring it over. I love it. But I'm gonna, I want to, I want to box smart. I do want to box clever. I'm not gonna. Use... I wanna, I wanna work his weaknesses out. I wanna work his weaknesses out, and then I'm gonna capitalize on them, and then take him down slowly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like you say, everything can change in the ring. But I've got it. I've got it there. Mm-hmm. Ready, I've got it there, ready, George, for whatever, whatever the weather, rain, slow, fuck. And I've got my fucking my snow boots, so I'm ready to go in whatever, whatever he wants. So, you know what I mean, but yeah, I'm not looking, looks like I don't like, I don't like to give too many predictions. That and the other, I'm not about that because I thought can go either way. And the day that I turn around and say that, he could fucking spark me out. But yeah. looking enough, I have got a granite chin. I don't know. I have got that granny team. I think I'm one of the least knocked down bare knuckle boxers. I've been knocked down. Been knocked down once. Once, yeah. 29 rounds. Mm. Which is mental. I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is love to say, but I've heard he's a lovely guy and I'm sure we'll have a fucking couple of beers afterwards. But I've got, love to say, I've got one or what I've got one 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 goal set and it's forward and it's for that bout. And as as long as there's one breath in my lungs, I ain't stopping. And unless unless there's a fucking a cut that's fucking stopping me, my vision, I won't stop. I'll be like, get some fucking, get some Vaseline in that. Let's fucking go again. You know what I mean? Like you say, with, like with, with the, um, the Christian Evans fight, the second fight, the second round, I broke my hand in eight places and I still fought for four rounds. Yeah. And that was, and that was hard. That was hard going that way. And if you see on the fight as well, I watched it back the other day. You see me there. And you see me jab him off and I, and I, and I lower him up because he was out for a step off to him and I sit down the port on the straight right and I go to throat and I go, and I, <laughs> I, I love that one there, I that one there. Yeah. But I, I'm so looking forward to getting back in the ring. I really, really, really am. It's, yeah, I really am looking forward to getting back in there. I'm looking back forward to getting back to all the lads, the environment. Um, the, like I say, the camps are the things I love anyway. I think, with all the, the pay-per-view and the ticket sales and um, streaming and the COVID, it's been very difficult for us for us to get it out there and stuff like that. But it is what it is, and it, it, this is the fight game. That's what we that, that's what we are uh, holding on to our promoters for, for them to push it forward for us as well, which they're kind of doing as well. So it's just the all-round spectrum of it as well. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the log sale. I'm not looking... I wasn't looking at it low I'm just gonna have this one. I'm looking at it tech. I need that call back. I need my call back. Because mm. that's the that's my first call. And I was undefeated in that. Like I said, I never I never lost that total. I I think I'd, I think this is the fourth win on the bank and the fifth fourth or fifth win on the bank for the bank. So for for them to take it off me because I wasn't um fighting off. And that's cool. You have to do what you gotta do in there. Yeah. So there's no grudges and there's no fucking there's no malice from me because none of you more likely to be blessed with the stress, man. And I, I ain't about fucking holding on crudges or nothing like that. I've got a beautiful daughter, I've got a lovely home. I've got great friends around me, lovely family, a good support network. I'm healthy, I'm in a good job. My bills are paid, there's a roof over my head. So this is this is just a bit bit of me. This is only a bit a bit of the old bit of the old beat I do. I mean, you can't complain. Life is life is wonderful, and and it's so great to hear you. So uplifting, you know, so happy. Um, as you always are, to be fair. So it's always great to get you on an interview. But no, finally, 
people we've got to thank who would you like to thank for this camp for this journey just bare knuckle boxing your whole career in general okay whole career in general listen to the start and foremost of it yeah well i've had Mr. Mr. Nelda. So my brother love food fucking from from back in the day from when we were in school together he's the one who invited me uh, to, to come to bare knuckle boxing he's the one who said to me come on bro you know give it a go and i was like man i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> So he got me, he gave, he gave me the confidence to come to the bare knuckle boxing sort of thing. And then from that, ever every since then, we've always done our corners together. You know what I mean? Even though gloves, I'll come off holiday and I've, 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 got, I've got a fucking, I've got a fight in Coventry. Yeah, yeah, I'll come to your corner. He drove from London up to him. So, so first and foremost, I'd like to have a big, massive thank you to Ricky, man, because obviously he got me involved in the game. You know what I mean? He's helped us throughout my camp. He's my number one sparring partner. So, a good job he's the number one sparring partner because so fuck me the kid he tells who good job I can get used to them shots don't know the <laughs> he come back from to sign them because yeah just uh Chris I've just lost you I've just lost you there you you said back. Simon yep go again you said Simon and then it cut yeah. off you're good now yeah, yeah. So, Solomon's going to be godfather to my daughter as well. Like I say, me and him are really close. He goes above and beyond his measures. He loves giving night. I phone him up because uh, I finished work. At, uh, I finished work at six, half six, got home, got changed. I had my daughter and sacrificing time with her. So, I'll come home and give her food. Dropped her to my mum's house uh, the two nights in the week that I had her. Um, and then my mum looked after the baby. I got to Solomon for nine o'clock on the night time. We kept the gym open till 10, one to one with him till 10 o'clock on the evening time. And then if he, he, like you say, he goes above and beyond where we don't really have to, you know what I mean? And he really does. And he, he, he takes a lot of care for his fighters. He's all, he'll phone me up, brother, you okay? How's things? How you feeling? How's your weight? Blah, 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 blah. So, massive thank you to Solomon. Um, yeah, family and my yeah, my family and my friends are fucking that have been helping me out, both with uh with the babbies and stuff like that. But another one as well. So I love to thank Eclipse Bullies as well, which is one of my sponsors, Eclipse Bullies. Um Paul Egan's roofing, uh Jamalan, um yeah, Jamalan uh food as well. Uh who else have I got? Yeah, I got CJ uh, FJ Civils, uh, they they've helped me out massively with sponsorship deals. Um DJ Herbal. As well, yeah, yeah, he's um, yeah. Uh, on, on, on Instagram, he's helping out with some of my supplements as well. Flag Fitness helping out with some of my supplements. Um, who else? Who else has helped me out? I don't want to forget anyone here because I will get fucking shot in the head. <laughs> uh, uh, Biodology, one of my barbers, he, mm. he's just opened up. He has just on, on he's a local business as well. So, big up to him, he's just opened up. Massive fucking respect to himself and that shutting down the shop, getting my hair full with that stuff like that. Uh, Simon again for fucking all everything he's helped me for. Um, I'm trying to think of ours because I know there's a couple of others as well, but I'm sure I'll stick them in an Instagram video. Otherwise, yes. I'll remember yeah. them later. Yeah, well, I've said, look, so just all my, all my friends, people that bought tickets, people that have, that have been there for me through thick and thin over the last, the last five, six years of me being in competitions constantly all the time we'll be fighting. So it's a massive help, it really is. And I think they don't understand how how much it does help you having that little bit of a relief where it's like, oh, you're you're, you're helping me do this so I can do this. And it, and it helps out massively. You know? Like my missus in the moment as well, like she's like I said, she knows I'm she, she, she knows I'm fighting too. She'll be her first fight here or whatever coming down to London. And she'll do me dinners and stuff like that when I do after I finish work and so it's all good, man. Everything I'm very like I said, I'm in a very good place. Everything's just falling into place for me, just now. So um I can't thank everybody enough. Obviously, Jim and Joe for always giving me the opportunity to fight uh at the shows and stuff like that. But uh let's say twisted Jim and Joe. I'll be taking that fucking title straight back though, like I'm just saying. I mean Nice yeah, but yeah, and Connor as well, Connor, 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 you know, the other sparring and stuff with me as well, Podmore, and they just, basically, my camp at the gym, we've got a massive, we've got a, we've got a big family unit, at our gym. and uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't change my gym, bro, it's like, it is, walk into there, it's a members club now, if you walk into there, and it's like, literally, it's all being with all your best pals, yeah. at the gym, 
what I mean? It's happening to punch each other in the fucking face, really hard. What I mean? <laughs> I mean that is that's the best way to make friends I've found. So so I fully agree, fully yeah. agree with that sentiment. Yeah. Now, nah, Chris, um, you, man, thank thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure being in your presence. Oh, and, thank uh, you very much. Look forward to seeing you fight oh, on the eleventh of September. Yeah, well, yeah, but you'll see me at the eleventh of September, and no doubt we'll have a couple of jars after kids. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Look forward to it, my man. And uh, yeah. And you, you too, Perfect. Bye. Take care of the chat.